There hey, we go. <laughs> there you are. There. Hey. Nice. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yep. Oh, well, it's nice to see you. Well, it's actually nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. We've talked online a lot, but yeah, nothing's face to face. We've talked online and uh, you have sent us a couple of really amazing stories over a couple yeah. of years of how the vest has helped you. And we've just enjoyed hearing from you and listening to your stories. <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had my vest for a few years now. You have. You guys, yeah, you guys were really, yeah, it was really in the beginning stages, I, th I feel like when you guys, I still have like the old packs. <laughs> We've been around for about four years, five years? Yeah. I don't know. Four or five years, guys. <laughs> 2017. So. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. So I was, it was fairly, yeah. I think I've had my, my vest for at least three, so. Oh, good. Well, let me, let me give a little, um, little intro as to what we're doing here. Um, I'm Julia from Thermo Apparel, and I'm here with Kim Wagg, who is the owner of the court, I'm sorry, the coat. <laughs> and Horse Pub in Lindsay, Ontario, which is about 90 minutes northeast of Toronto. Just give you a kind of reference point. And she is married with two little boys. And when we're done with our live today, we'll put a link to the coach and Horse Pub in the comment section so everybody can see your really cool pub. Um, so welcome, we're glad you're here. Thank you, thank you for the invite. You're welcome. Now, after you were diagnosed with MS, you left your career to pursue, pursue your passion in dog training. Yeah. And you also worked at a local pub, the Coach and Horse Pub, yeah. as a bartender to kind of supplement your income. So t tell us about that. Yeah, so after I was diagnosed, um, I was currently, I was in a management position for a retail company, uh, very corporate. And I very quickly, you start when you have a diagnosis as MS, you start kind of reflecting on your life and what you want your future to look like. And definitely a retail corporate job was not ideal for me anymore. I thought it was at the time. And then once, once you start kind of actually looking and reflecting on your life, it's like, no, it's not what I want. So I, I actually first took the job at the pub just to get something different. And it was only supposed to be for like one or, one or two days. Never did I work one or two days. And then um, I had just gotten a puppy as well, my German Shepherd puppy. And I've always had, I've always trained a bit on the side for family and friends. Always had, um, but I always just, that was just a side thing. And then I realized that I could actually do it more for an actual <laughs> income as well as I was good. I'm good at it. So I started dog training quite regularly and it became um, quite busy and as well as, but I also, I fell in love with the pub. So I was doing both of them very much side by side. The pub was supplementing um, the bills and it was very, very fun, very beneficial, um, exhausting, but beneficial. Um, I had a few relapses within there and I was able to work with obviously with the dog training and with the pub, I was able to work with both of those companies, whereas the corporate job definitely was not um, helpful in those senses. So that automatically um, helped pursue um, my career path of finding stuff that works with people um, and, and doesn't care. You're not just a number. So yeah, so I started doing really well with the dog training and it got to the point where, um, so dog training, of course, as well as uh, running a pub, both very demanding physically more so with the dog training is super demanding. So I, when I was kind of at the point of a precipice where I was going to have to pick one, um, I was either going to go full time, get a facility for the dog training. It was about that time in, in my career that it was ready to do that. Um, I was presented with the option to kind of work towards purchasing the pub with my sister. And because I loved the place so much, that was actually, it was no, there was probably, I, I'd say it took about two days thinking it through. And then it was, it was a no brainer. It was definitely, definitely purchased the pub. So we've owned it for a little while and then COVID hit, but yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. That's, that's so cool. When did you guys purchase the pub? 
Uh, so we officially purchased it closed January 15th of 2020. So oh, last wow. year. Yeah. So we were open for 60 days. And then we had to close for our first shutdown mm. for first time in 30, 33, 32 years that the pubs ever shut down because we we are open seven days a week. So that was bittersweet. <laughs> But you guys made it through COVID. You're still going yeah. strong. Yeah, yeah. We're we got we got pretty tight at sometimes, and uh, we have a few loans that we'll be repaying. But yeah, don't we have definitely we're pulling through. We are ready to get over the hump. Um, I'm hopefully we are through because we're in Ontario. We've gone through a few lockdowns, and Ontario was kind of one of the worst hit provinces in Canada for uh, COVID. Our area has been fine throughout the whole time, but. Uh, but we're, of course, being so close to Toronto, and that is the hub of um, the area. So we tend to, we've shut down three times now. Um, yeah, the, yeah, for at least a few, a few months each time. So it's been pretty, pretty different. So we've uh, expanded. We've, it's made us grow, actually, quite a bit um, in the way we run the company. We've had to expand the menu, and we've actually expanded into the parking lot, obviously, for the patio and stuff. So, yeah, it's been actually really – it's been interesting but fun and very very beneficial for learning, especially especially if you think starting a new company is usually similar. Um, did not expect these circumstances with buying an established business, but here we are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, let's let's back up a little yeah. bit. So before you bought the pub, you were just a bartender, and yes. with your MS, you were you struggled with heat sensitivity. Very much so. Very much so. Okay, and you thought you were going to have to quit being the bartender. And yeah. So what happens when you overheat? You know, what is your fatigue like? How long does it take to recover? Yeah. What was your thought process there? So with my MS. Um, in the past, I've been affected. So usually it's paralysis on my left side, a bit of vision stuff. So usually a lot of times, so when I begin to overheat, um, the, the MS can exuberate those symptoms. So I have similar type of symptoms as my previous relapses, as well as it causes extreme fatigue. And with extreme fatigue, it's like you've stayed up and haven't slept at all for over 36 hours. Like my eyes will hurt my whole body will hurt. I'll actually, I'll be limping. Um, I have trouble moving, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll, obviously when you're hot, you have trouble thinking. So it just trying to serve the public while also trying to deal with those symptoms becomes very, very hard. So when I found the vest, I was actually saving up for it. Um, but I was also kind of like, okay, this is getting a little hard with work because it is, we do get some hot, uh, muggy days in the summer. So I was thinking about cutting back my hours just to combat that for my own health. And then, um, a, the, like not even a week later, I came into the pub and the customers presented me with my very first thermal apparel vest, the undercool, which I absolutely love. They gave me some extra packs. It's great. So then when I put the vest on and tried it for the first time it was like night and day it keeps like just along that back where like you get all back sweaty and everything it just just enough there is enough to keep my core temperature at like a level that it doesn't I don't overheat I still get warm at times especially when it's really hot on the patio but it doesn't it's it's like night and day I don't get extremely fatigued I don't need to I don't feel dragged down I don't my um it's hard to explain that way is, is it just helps. It helps significantly. Um, doesn't take it away completely, but it helps enough that I can actually do my day to day stuff and continue bartending. Um, it gives it enough that I can do that every single day still. That's, that's wonderful. That's amazing yeah. that yeah. it helps that much because, and it's so cool that your customers bought it for you. Yeah. I'm so thankful. Order came through because, um, I had gotten a phone call or an email or a text, one of the three, and they were like, well, we're buying this for a friend, and we're not sure the size. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice of you, you know? <laughs> and then it, uh, we sent it out, and it, and uh, like three days later, you had posted about it online. I'm like, oh, my God, who got the vest? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, because I think we were actually talking before that even happened. 
Um, Cause yeah. I was in the process of, like I said, I was saving up. It was uh, obviously I was just bartending and doing the dog training and there was a lot of sauce. So I was like, I, I don't spend a whole lot of money on myself. So when I do spend money, I tend to like put a little $20 here and there mm -hmm. and save up. Yeah. So then I didn't have it and it was great. And yeah, it was such a big surprise. So you were able to do more shifts at the bar or what? what yeah. Uh, I ended up instead of going part time, I continued on full time, uh, even through the summer. And then I actually one thing I found even this year, um, well, through COVID uh, stuff changed, I actually started golfing. Um, and I absolutely love it. I'm horrible at it. But I love golfing now. And I use my vest on the golf course almost every single time. It is. It's so much easier. And actually I have a few of my friends that golf with me and they're like, okay, I need to get a cooling vest because that thing is awesome. <laughs> uh, you have the competitive advantage. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I definitely it's. And the thing is, is then it's I've any kind of sport like that. I haven't been able to get out and do because it's usually I'm more towards the uh, hot weather sports and uh, I was never, I never pursued anything because I didn't think I could. And as well as I have limitations with, uh, with the MS, I have, uh, I can't do certain things physically, but golf ended up being surprisingly for me, cause I'm, I've never even looked at it as a sport, um, but it ended up being a sport that I can do. And even when I'm physically fatigued and stuff is not too bad on me. And yeah, definitely, especially now with, uh, in having a vest, it's night and day. I would not be able to go and golf at one in the afternoon if I didn't have it. So wonderful. That's awesome. Yeah. What else do you do with your vest? I mean, you bartend, you golf, or do you do anything yeah. else? I use it like whenever I know. So in like, again, so Canada and Ontario, we get some humid, hot days. Um, and we're reaching like 40 degrees Celsius. Um, sorry, I don't know, Fahrenheit conversion, but um but yeah, so like I have used it taking the kids out to the park when they were younger, they're 10 and 15 now. So, um, and hiking actually took it um, earlier in the summer, we went hiking through some hills and stuff. I wore it then uh, when I take the, I used to do it when I do dog training. I haven't uh, trained since last summer, but um, when I'm actively doing dog training outside, I usually wear it. There's just kind of that peace of mind. That's like a security vest automatically. If it's gonna be hot, if I'm gonna be outside, I'm usually wearing it uh, gardening for sure. Always have it on. Um, yeah, essentially everything I do outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, let me ask you this because you, you have one vest and you have one set of cooling packs. I have two sets of cool, oh, cooling have, packs, thankfully. Okay. Yes. You have the slim cool packs and they yes. last one to two hours, depending on what you're doing. Yep. So when you're at the pub, because that's a lot of that. Sometimes people ask us, "Well, I'm I need to I need something that lasts four or six hours, you know, or I'm going to yeah. go do eight hours." And I'm like, "Well, the vest not going to last that long for you, but you can switch the packs out and yeah. you can keep going." And I explain, you know, put them in ice water, put them in the fridge, put them in the freezer. So how do you switch the packs out, or how do you keep the vest going while you're at the pub? Because I'm assuming your shift is six you, hours, eight hours. Yeah, I usually do about eight nine hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, so usually right now, I, I actually usually keep the vest most of the time at work in the summer. And if I have to go like, I'll, cause I'm only just down the road from the pub. So if I need it for anything, I just run over and grab it anyways. Um, but I have both sets of packs in there and I wear the vest and then I just, yeah, when it's usually depending on the day, one to two hours, and then I'll take, I just take it off, switch out the packs and I throw the other packs in the freezer. And by the time the packs are melted. The other ones are ready to go back in. Cool. So you just take a quick little yeah, break. I just, yeah, I just switch them out. And just Very keep going. Yep. Yeah. Actually, a lot of times I'll have, uh, there's certain regulars, customers, as soon as they see that I'm starting to switch out the packs, if it's busy, they're like, here, just give it to me. I'll switch them out. So like, I have a lot of people that just switch out. They'll switch out my packs for me while I continue to work. And then they're like, it's ready. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That is so cool. So it's like a big family at the coach. Yeah, yeah, definitely a big family. And they all, like I said, they all understand what it is. And if they don't, they usually ask. And then after that, like, there's most of our customers that are regulars know exactly what it is. That is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Let me look at my questions here for you. <laughs> well, before, is, is there anything else that you want to tell us about your vest or what else it's have you done or what you can tell big difference wise using it not using it anything else you want to add yeah not using it like I said um if I don't use it I get one thing that people don't realize is like so when you get fatigued and overheated with the MS and stuff it just wears on your body so it tends to by bedtime I'm in that much more pain than I would normally be if I didn't overheat um so if I keep myself, my, te my core temperature, like kind of normal, I'm just kind of the regular discomfort at night and everything. But yeah, if I've been overheating or overworking um, and allowing my, my core temperature to go up, I find so a lot as well as the conditions I have, like I'll, I'll have all the pain and kind of extreme fatigue when it happens. But when I do finally like lie down for the night, I'm in that much more pain. My calves, like I have a lot of leg pain, nerve pain, all my nerves are on fire at night. But if I keep it down, so when I'm using the vest, it doesn't happen uh, near to the extent. So that's a big thing. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad that it helped. Have you tried uh, using it at nighttime? I haven't had to use it at nighttime. I am a big advocate. I have the AC cranked. I have my, yeah, my bedroom is usually very chilly with fans, multiple fans going. So I don't tend to have too much issue at night that way. I do the same thing. I sleep with <laughs> like 60 and we've got a fan that's just going right. <laughs> if I was sleeping me. in like a tent, I would probably definitely for sure. Or if I didn't have air conditioning, I would definitely probably wear something. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, what is next for the coach and horse pub? So right now we're kind of focusing on just getting through the COVID and the kind of the, the extra little hole it put us in there. Um, but once we get going, we've done quite a bit of stuff through every time we're closed, we do a little bit um, more kind of off our little to do list. Um, but yeah, what's next is essentially a bit of cosmetic. Um, we're going to continue to grow, support some, get some local bands in back again, because that was a big thing. Um, Nicole and myself have been running the place for a few years, even prior to owning it so we kind of have already been started in our direction and started um, getting the pub to how we want so we want to get back to how essentially where we were before like we had um, private events booked and we're starting to have those again as well as we have like live entertainment three to four times a week so we're that's our first uh, priority is getting back into that um, and then from there we will uh, we want to uh, we're not sure actually like that's the thing is it's we kind of just want to get back to that and we can want to we through COVID we had to expand the menu like I said so we kind of want to continue to build on that and become become like the the town to, they're the pub to get to like and stay that way mm -hmm. just like the neighborhood place to go yeah yeah we've definitely created that place so with our biggest thing is is we're going to maintain that and continue to cosmetically upgrade do all those things support all the local artists that we can um while maintaining our popularity at the time that's awesome i we're so happy for you and we're so Thank happy you. that you do this and that you can keep going with the, the coach and post cub and just keep building it and Wear your vest, keep cool, and keep doing what you're doing. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And Thank you so much for having me. We'll put the link for your pub down below, and we'll put the link for Thermal Apparel down below. And if anybody has any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to answer any questions anytime. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.